Hello, this is Dr. J here with Let's Play Vault of the Vindicator. Vault of the Vindicator is a real-time roguelike first-person dungeon crawler on the Commander X-16. A quick note about the Commander X-16. It is a 1980s style computer that is made today in the modern era. It's designed by David Murray, aka 8-Bit Guy. And it uses legitimate 1980s era hardware, like a uh, 6502 CPU. It has just 512 kilobytes of RAM, up to uh, 2 megabytes, which, you know, by modern standards, that's literally nothing. In the 80s, that would have been pretty darn good. But uh, the point of the Commander X-16 is so that you can have, if you have a nostalgia or a fondness, for 1980s era home computers or video game consoles that you can buy one without the necessarily the difficulty of tracking down say a Commodore 64 or a Tandy 1000 or whatever and also without the unreliability of 30 to 40 year old hardware and it also has a very well documented hardware specs and interface which makes it arguably easier to develop for it than for, say, like a Nintendo Entertainment System or that kind of thing. So it also has appeal if you are somebody who would like to develop games or other programs on retro hardware. So that's, the, uh, that's what the Commander 16 is. Uh, it also has an emulator that you can download for free so that if you don't want to buy the actual hardware, no problem, just download the emulator. You can still use any programs designed for it. And uh, Volta the Vindicator is a launch game that comes with the Commander X-16. We're going to go ahead and give it a play. All right, so I will admit that the title screen is perhaps a little underwhelming. It doesn't have cool artwork or fancy graphics or anything, just a honestly rather sloppily, no doubt deliberately sloppily, written uh, title here. So the title screen doesn't give it an amazing impression, but don't let that dissuade you. This is actually a pretty cool game. Also, it's got pretty darn groove in title screen music, so it's got that going for it. Uh, you can play this with a Super Nintendo controller, because that is the type of game controller that the Commander X-16 accepts. Although I have a Super Nintendo controller, I cannot plug it into my modern computer, which is what I'm running this on. I am running it in an emulator, so I'm going to have to use the keyboard. And you may think I'm a wuss for doing this, but I'm kind of bad at roguelikes, so I'm actually going to play on easy mode, at least to start out with. Now this did not come with a manual that I could see, uh, so, and there's not like any in-game tutorializing or anything. So, uh, you kind of just have to figure things out as you go. All right, now it does, if you hit uh, H or start, bring up the controls, which I'm going to fumble with these a lot because I did a test recording for a few minutes to get a little bit acquainted with it but I certainly did not play it for long enough to really develop any kind of muscle memory, so I'm going to start out being pretty bad at this. I'll probably get better as I go along. One hopes so, anyway. Alright, so there's quite a few items for us to pick up here. I honestly don't really know what most of these do. Now this is a roguelike, so the levels are randomly generated. You can see the mini-map there in the lower left corner, and there is some kind of horrible creature that we can see in the distance. Now, I don't know if there's a better method of fighting these guys than just walking up to them and slashing them a bunch with your sword. It's the only method I found of fighting them, particularly when I did my brief test recording earlier. Oh, there's another one. Get wrecked you. I don't know what this thing is. Looks like some kind of troll or goblin or orc. Except it appears to be buck naked, so... Probably not an orc. They usually wear armor and use weapons. 
But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a legit first-person dungeon crawler running on 1980s era hardware. And in case you're not aware, that's an impressive accomplishment. So well done to the creator of this game for, for programming this. This is quite impressive. Uh, the technicals of this, I looked at the source code a little bit because it's publicly available. It is running in bitmap mode, so it is not using the Commander X16 normal tiling system, which makes a lot of sense because you would kind of need bitmap mode to have direct screen access, direct access to the, uh, the video RAM, to be able to create this kind of perspective first person view. I don't think it would be really hard to accomplish this with the tiling system, I think. Oh, this is kind of a big first level, isn't it? Now, I'm an uh, indie game developer myself who has a real love for retro systems. So I've been looking into developing on the Commander X16. And before I even knew this game existed, my idea was something a little like this. First person dungeon crawler kind of thing. A uh, principal difference between this game and my idea is mine would be turn-based and you'd be controlling an entire party. So it wouldn't have the real-time aspect. Once you got into a fight, it would go to a battle screen where you'd fight turn-based battles. But in terms of the... Uh, in terms of just having this perspective, pseudo-3D first-person view, that is pretty much what I'm envisioning. Now, I know that we saw the stairs down earlier. But I decided to keep exploring, and now I've forgotten where they were. There they are. We have 13 hit points left. I'm probably going to die a lot. My impression from my quick test recording was that even on easy mode, this is a challenging game. As you'd expect of a 1980s style first person dungeon crawler roguelike. Uh, let's see. I need to remember... Yes, this is how you select items. I might want to drink this healing potion because I'm pretty hurt. Whoa, where did this guy come from? He just came from out of nowhere while I was messing with my inventory. We've got this scroll here that we can try to cast. Now, in the manner of roguelikes, you don't really know what it does. It seems to be randomized. But we'll give it a try. See if it's good. Oh, is this a better sword? A student's foil. So right now we have an attack power of one. Now we have an attack power of two. It is better. So let's drop this. All it's doing is taking up inventory space if it's inferior to our new weapon. Oops. Oh no, I did not mean to do that. Oh wow, this does do more damage. I would be playing better if I had an actual SNES controller. It's a little awkward on the keyboard. It's not really a complaint about the controls. Uh, it, the keys are laid out so it controls about as well as it could on a keyboard. But it'll be fun once my actual physical Commander X16 arrives because I have pre-ordered the second batch to actually play this on the real hardware with a Super Nintendo controller. That'll be pretty sweet. I like this music, it's very groovy. They're not really going for the creepy ambient sound, they're going for the, the the groovy dungeon delve and party kind of sound. Either one can be good, but this is this music's pretty well done, I dig it. Oh, down to just 11 hit points. Yeah, if I manage to clear the game on easy mode, then I'll certainly try it on normal. But, uh, it feels plenty challenging enough even on easy. I'm sure that's probably just because I'm terrible, but... It's pretty fun, too. You know, I mean, sure, it's, it's primitive, you know? It's running on 1980s-style computers, so... You gotta set your expectations appropriately, but even so, it has all the fundamental ingredients of a dungeon crawler. They're all here. And there's a real charm to this sort of retro-style aesthetic. 
Aha, more stairs down. We have another drought. I should maybe drink it before going down. That seems like it might be smart. Alright, we've reached level 3. Oh good, another guard drought. Oh, I'm getting hit. From behind? Oh boy. This foil does do better damage. We kill enemies more quickly with it, that's for sure. I do wish this game had come with a manual, both because it would be sort of easier to figure out how to play it, and because, you know, back in the 80s, the style of game, or the era of game that this is emulating, games did come with manuals. Often pretty detailed, lovingly crafted manuals. And that's kind of part of the charm of the era, so... You know, just it would have been cool if uh, if we got such a thing. Uh, let's just drop this. I don't even know what it's for. Oh boy! Some kind of evil wizard? Kill him! Kill him quick! What is this? Cracked focus. That looks like another enemy. Some kind of evil monk. Oh! Oh, he's, he's a merchant. Buy chainmail for three gold. That sounds like a good deal. How do I say yes? Oh, that says 30 gold, not three. I don't have 30 gold. Oops. Got confused on my controls for a second there. Wow, 30 gold. Yeah, I don't have nearly enough. Now, as cool as this game is, and it is very cool, I don't get the impression that it's huge. I don't think there's a stunning variety of enemy types and items or anything like that. So I don't think that, unlike some roguelikes, it's the kind of game that you could end up sinking hundreds of hours into. Probably just a few hours and you'd have basically seen what the game has to offer, I imagine. But that's fine. It doesn't need to be huge to be cool and fun. Alright, and we have reached a level with a new aesthetic. This is also a classic of this style of old-school first-person dungeon crawler. Once you get deep enough, you get a new tile set. The music changes. You might think it would become even more ominous, but in this case it just becomes even more groovy. And with this purple look, it's all more... And we're dead. <laughs> all more ominous looking. I never did use my scroll. Okay, we failed miserably. I'll go ahead and give it another try. You see now I am playing on easy mode. The game is pretty tough on, on easy mode as it is. Also, find him. Who is him? This is kind of the real reason I'm saying I wish there was a manual, because it could give a detailed backstory, introduce some characters, which would be great for immersion. As it is, there is no story. We don't know who we are. We know that we are looking for somebody. A male, since it says find him. That's literally all we know. So... You know, kind of hard to get into a role and do any role-playing or anything. Oh, here comes one of these. I'm just going to call them goblins. I don't know if that's what they are, but that's what they shall be called henceforth. Oh, looks like we got some better armor this time. Okay, let us ditch this crappy armor. And equip the chainmail. All right. Obviously, as a roguelike, there is an element of luck. If you find a lot of good items, then clearly you'll do better. And that's that's not really an element of skill. That's just, hey, you, you found items. Lucky you. But that's part of the genre, so that's not a complaint or a criticism. You play roguelikes, you know that some games you'll get boned and some games you'll get lucky. It's just the way it is. 
I will say that because the game seems pretty small, that I think the fact that it has randomly generated levels is a good thing. Because otherwise, it's small enough that you could just easily memorize the levels and complete the game very quickly. But since they're randomly generated, you never know exactly what you're going to encounter. You can't just memorize your way through and it'll make the experience last longer and take longer to clear the game. So I think that was a good decision. And there is something kind of fun about generating, or uh, I mean implementing, designing and implementing random dungeon generation algorithms. It's something I've done myself, and when you design a good one and then watch it create really cool, interesting dungeon layouts, that's good fun. And like I said, definitely makes for a more dynamic experience. The game's a little different every time you play. I mean, you'll encounter the same kind of enemies, find the same kind of items, but you're not going to know which way to go. You're not going to know which way you're going to get attacked from. And I got hit from two sides there. That was just pure bad luck. Let's try to remember to use our scroll. All right. Use scroll. Cast poison. Okay, I, I think the poison killed him. Oh, we found more stairs down already. So now we have to weigh the risk of encountering enemies with the possible benefit of getting items if we decide whether we want to keep exploring or just go straight down. And obviously I decided I wanted to keep exploring. We're pretty hurt. I'm hoping I find a potion. Maybe that's not the smart decision. Maybe anytime I find stairs down I should just take them. Uh, but no. This was the right decision after all. Now let's see if we can backtrack to the stairs. But yeah, getting this sort of first-person projection... Oh, I'm actually exploring somewhere new, aren't I? Oh well, it is what it is. Getting this sort of first-person 3D projection running on a 6502 CPU with just 128k of VRAM and 512k of system RAM. Like I said, that's an accomplishment. That is impressive. Looking forward to trying to accomplish a similar feat myself. I've been making good progress. But uh, we'll discuss that another time in another video. This video is about this game. I'm definitely looking forward to possibly making some videos about my own experience developing on the Commander X-16 though, assuming it doesn't crash and burn disastrously. I don't quite have 30 gold. I have 25, so I'm close. Hmm. Oh, I have two healing potions. Actually, I should drink one of them. There we go. So what is this again? Right, the cracked focus. I still don't know what the deal is with this thing. I suppose the fact that you don't know what any of this stuff is is actually part of the game, but... Oh man, I would have loved a manual to explain some of this stuff. Okay, I tried using the cracked focus and nothing happened. Uh-oh. We know about these guys. They're nasty. Let's let him come around the corner and let him have it. Is he too smart for me? Oh, someone got in his way. Alright, let's just kill him. Ugh, die, 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 die. Oh good, another guard drought. Oh, and another dude in the way. Okay, he's dead. So I'm discovering that it's uh, honestly just as fast to just hold the button down. Okay, hang on. Our inventory's full. I don't know what you are, but you seem useless. You're getting dropped. And there we go. 
Should probably drink it right away. We're pretty messed up. There we go. Alright, well, looks like we're making it to the fourth floor again. The temple. Maybe we'll live just a little bit longer this time. We do have a, a guard drought in our inventory and we're going in with full hit points, so... What is that? Another cracked focus? Yeah, I don't know what these are for. I'll just drop it. It's just taking up space. And we already have one. Hopefully we don't need more than one. Is that an enemy? No, it's a, it's a fountain. Some arcane workstation, maybe, it says. Maybe. Oh no, it's not a fountain. What the heck is it? I don't know. Oh wow, stairs down already? Heck with it, I'm taking them. Lucky. Another arcane workstation. Maybe I should try using the crack focus on it. Oh, it worked! Oh, never mind. Huh. It kind of looks like you're meant to do that, though, doesn't it? Because it's totally hovering there. Interesting. I don't know what effect it's having. Oh boy, multiple guys. Run. Get wrecked, get wrecked. Oh god, we're gonna die. Oof. Drink the drought. Okay. That was nasty, two of those guys in a row. A Devout's Lily. I still don't know what those do either. Okay, if you're not going to chase me, then good day to you, sir. Oh, this guy's guarding a guard's drought, I think, so we'll kill him. Because overall we'll get more hit points than we lose fighting him. What is this? What's this weird crack? The Devout's Lily doesn't do anything to it. Can't seem to interact with it. Can I go through it? No. Weird. It really stands out. It's not like a normal texture or anything. Yeah, strange. Hey, more stairs down. Guard's breastplate for 40 gold. I would love to. Oh, he said thank you, devout. Did he think that I'm a devout because I'm holding a devout lily? Nice. Okay, I assume this is better than what I've got. Two, one. Okay, it, it is, apparently. And we'll drop this. Alright, nice. Sometimes I think I might have forgotten to re-equip my sword after I change to something else, and then my attack power dropped. I think that might have happened on my first failed attempt, thinking about it in retrospect. Okay, those are the stairs back up. <coughs> Excuse me, I, uh, I think I need another cough drop. There we go. It's a, it's a very minor point, but it's strange to me that the shoulder buttons... The heck are you? Oh, it's an enemy. It's strange to me that the shoulder buttons are what actually rotate you, and the directional buttons actually have you sidestep. I would kind of expect it to be the other way around. It's, it's a minor point, it's not a big deal, but that feels a little backwards to me. We're getting lucky on finding all these guard droughts. All these healing potions. I don't know what that one thing was that we fought, a robot?
This has a pretty good draw distance. It seems like you can see quite a few spaces ahead of you. Ooh, a new level again. Oh, this is weird looking. Also, that is a lot of enemies. A lot of robot dudes. We're, we're dead. Okay. <laughs> well, that went pretty badly. We, we died right away once we reached the cloister. Let's give it one more try in this video, see if we can get any farther. Aha, uh -huh, healing potion right away. Lucky us. Yeah, pretty good draw distance. Textures look fairly low res on the walls and stuff, and obviously the floor and ceiling are a solid color. Limitations from, you know, the hardware. I'm just trying to figure out about what resolution is that. About 16 by 16, it looks like. I should probably try to avoid combat more than I do. There doesn't seem to be experience as far as I can tell, so getting into fights just gets you hurt. So yeah, if I were better at avoiding fights, I might live longer. Well, sometimes though, it's kind of hard. Duders just pop up in your face and you just kind of have to kill them. Many dead ends. Okay, we can go north. That little mini map in the corner is super helpful. I'd probably get horrendously lost without it. Oh. Devout Lily. I'm assuming that just means the monks will sell to you since he called me a devout. Oh, I'm struggling to find the stairs down, aren't I? And yeah, it seemed like putting the cracked focus on that one device. The cracked focus appeared to be hovering over it with a, like an aura around it, so that seemed intended. But I have no idea what it did. Oh my gosh. If I had just... Was that seriously within view from the start, or was I facing a different direction when I came down? Because if I could actually see the stairs down from the start and I just missed it, then... Well, that's hilarious, and hopefully you got a good laugh out of it. Wow, clearly there's no... Algorithm in place to make sure that the stairs down are a certain distance from... Your starting position. which has sort of both an advantage and a drawback. The drawback is it means that the way down might appear pretty much immediately right there and you can skip the whole level. But the advantage is that means the player truly is going to have no idea where the stairs down are. They can't assume that they're a certain distance away from where you start. So you can't really try to game the algorithm to figure out where those stairs are if they're just placed that randomly. Guarding the stairs down, are ya? Get wrecked. Uh-oh, let's just go down. Let's not fight this guy. There, we'll just move on. I might have missed some awesome items. Well, like I was just saying, though. Wow. Okay, well, we're at the temple, but we have no healing items. Oh, never mind. Yes, we do. Oh, it's guarded by a dude. Kill him quick. Okay. 
Uh, well, that was unlucky. Was I getting hit from two sides at once? I suspect so. It seemed like my hit points were going down real fast. Well, that game won pretty quickly, so let's do one more. So who is him? Who are we trying to find? Mysteries. Hey there, buddy. Pursuant to what I was saying about trying to avoid fights, let's uh, see if we can just kind of run away from these guys. And just, yeah, let's just go straight down these stairs. Well, any items in this room? Or in this hallway? Not that I... S well, he chased me. Okay, never mind. Get out of here, you. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just go straight down the stairs. This time I'm going to go for a strat of just, as soon as you see the stairs, go down them. Don't go around poking for items. Survival is the name of the game. A scroll. Guarded by a duder. These scrolls would be more useful if you had some clue what the heck they do. Oh, chainmail. So presumably that's better than what we've got. It, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, my defense is one either way. I don't know if it improves my attack. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Seemed like my attack was doing weird things as I was uh, fiddling with it. It'd be weird for your armor to improve your attack score, though. Oh, well, another dude. As much as I would love to avoid getting in unnecessary fights, he's kind of in the way of where I need to explore to find the stairs. Wow, swarms of them. Probably drink this now. Okay, we found the stairs down. Well, let's. Should we just take them? I was saying that would be my strategy. Alright, let's just do it. Yeah, this is actually pretty addictive. Did he just kill the monk? No. No, they leave each other alone. Guards draw for 30 gold. If I had any gold at all, but I've got like five. So... The answer is no, I would not like to buy your guards drought for 30 gold. Oh, more stairs down. Well... I don't feel too confident about this, given my lack of items, but... As soon as we see a guy, let's try casting a spell at him. Oh, let's put the Cracked Focus on this and see if anything interesting happens. I wonder if you have to put a Cracked Focus on all of these and it causes something to happen. Kalakazam! Oh, have I charmed him? Okay, he, he seems pretty okay with me all of a sudden. I'm sure this guy isn't, though. A guard sword, presumably better than the one we have. Yeah, or, or is it? Hang on. Why did that improve my my guard instead of my attack? That's so weird. Oh well, whatever. I'll take it. If it makes me more defensive, then... I'm okay with that. We really need a healing potion.
Oh, stairs down. Tell you what, I'm gonna look for a healing potion. But if I find a dude, okay, I found a dude. We're just gonna run. We're just running for it. Nope, leave me alone. Survival chances looking poor. Uh oh, this guy's probably gonna kill us. Never mind, we got him. Thanks to our improved defenses. But yeah, it's looking grim. Looking grim. Make no mistake about that. I don't have another cracked focus, so... Can't do anything with that. Guard's breastplate. Okay, now, now we're really getting some defense going. Wait a minute. Interesting. Did, do the defensive properties of those two armors stack? Because is it just my imagination, or when I have them both in my inventory, is my defense three? And otherwise it was two. A zealot scroll. Yes! A guard strout. What does a zealot scroll do? I guess we can try casting that next time we see a dude. See what happens. Which is right now. Okay, we just cast poison. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. Sometimes I fumble with my inventory a bit. Great, another dude. At least our defense is very high now. That was a pointless fight though, he wasn't guarding anything. Ugh, another one. They never seem to be dumb enough to come around- oh, never mind. Came around the corner after all. Oh my god, another one. Uh-oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay, we're good. I was gonna- yeah, I was gonna say they, they never come around corners after you, but then he did exactly that, so proven me wrong. Finally found the stairs down. I would love to find a guard drought, but it is not to be- I don't know what to do with that red crack in the wall. I'm sure there's some kind of super secret thing you can do with it. Oh, having a guard value of three enormously helps the survivability. You wanna come around the corner at me? Come at me, bro. Fine. Yeah, wow, we can take legions of these guys when our guard value is three. We're gonna die eventually if we can't find a potion, though. Oh, we have enough gold, we could maybe buy something. A devout lily. For, well, we don't have enough gold for that, and I don't know what it does. Why is it so expensive? Oh, it's a robot. Kill him. Kill him. Oh my gosh, those guys are tough. No, I really need a healing potion. Well, we found stairs down. We clearly won't survive for very long when we get down, given that we have three health, but... Oh god, run. The Cloister's appearance is quite strange. Actually, wasn't that guy selling to me even though I didn't have a Devout Slowly? I, I don't even know. 
Yeah, this place is weird. The walls almost look wooden. And it's got like a purple carpet and a wooden ceiling. This is not the kind of aesthetic I would expect from the third level. I would expect it to, I don't know, start looking more hellish looking or... I don't know, just like even more ominous than the levels above it. Instead, it just looks like somebody has a terrible sense of decoration. Like we're in some kind of really crappy apartment building or something. But yeah, until we can get healed up, if we encounter any enemies, I think we'd better just run. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Good day to you. I do not expect to survive. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. What is your problem? Oh. Uh. Hopefully I lost him. I don't know how good their pathfinding is. Oh my god. He's right on me. Can I get by him? Run. No, he's in the way. Ah, uh, unlucky. Yeah, the, the cloister level's real weird looking. Not really what I was expecting from the, the third, I don't know, stratum. I'll call it stratum. I think that's going to do for now. I think that pretty much showed off what the game is like. It's fun. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> Still, I'm not real impressed by this title screen other than the music, but uh, the game itself is a lot of fun. And as I said, an impressive technical accomplishment on 1980s hardware. So well done to you, Tobotur, if, uh, if that's how to pronounce your name. This is pretty sweet. I like it. Uh, am I going to be recording more of this? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Maybe I'll do more videos until I actually am able to clear the game at some point, but I'm not promising that. It'll depend on how my mood strikes me. In the meantime, I think I'm going to be continuing some of my own development efforts on the Commander X-16 uh, before my Christmas to New Year's vacation ends. I've been making some pretty good strides so far, and I'm going to continue seeing if I can put together something a little bit like this. Although, as I said, turn-based rather than... Uh, rather than real time, and I guess what I'm going for is assuming that it all works out. Going to be a little bit of a bigger game is what I have in mind, but way too early to be talking about that, I suppose, because uh, that's still in very, very early development stages. So this has been Vault of the Vindicator. Like I said, maybe I'll uh, record some more videos of this, but maybe not. Uh, it just depends on how the mood strikes me. So that's it for now. I'll see you later.